Chop Talk says welcome back. Tori's up checking out the work. We just had uh, the stereo running inside and showing her some lights and stuff. In fact, we're getting to the point where I just threw a, an end on instead of trying to twist and pinch wires. So we just keep throwing in more fuses, testing more circuits. But yeah, that was pretty cool. It sounds really good in there. Pixie's up to do a little wet sanding and some more painting. So that's coming along. You know, not sure exactly what's getting done today. I wouldn't mind having that in the car. I don't know that it's a requirement, but it would be kind of nice. Yes, let's get it in the car. That, like I said, it's not a requirement, but and, it would be nice. And the drive shaft. And see, there's still a motor. It didn't even fall out while we were gone. So, yeah, this should be a really good day. Oh, and it's gorgeous out. Okay, we're going to explain something. So, if you remember from uh, previous videos, we were talking about what would be the right air cleaner to put on here knowing we wanted to do something that was uh you know more original than not factory appearing factory appearing yeah because you know so many times you get the the crazy stuff with all the chrome and they look silly especially on a car like this when you want it to be uh you know improved but maybe not something that catches your eye this is uh this is what i believe that's a 68 327 yeah. chevrolet yeah, this fits really nice, considering if you try to find these things used, you've always got different configurations in terms of uh, diameter, as well as... Yeah, this was, I believe, on a 4GC, or it might have been a quad. Yeah, fits the Sniper real well. Now, Holly makes, uh, this is a special base that they make just for the Sniper. So I ordered one of those, came from Holly. Well, and the beauty is it clears all of this and does it nicely. Yeah, that is it here. It's, it's got the... Uh, it's got bump outs here for uh, fuel ports coming in, so that sits really nice. So we're going to play with this. Uh, I may end up getting a different factory one, uh, a different factory cover that we're going to see if we can adapt to this space. But what we want to do is see how do we sit on height, how well does this all kind of fit into the car. Hmm. We may actually be backwards. They may be talking about using those. Um, People who view my other videos will remember on the Corvette doing stuff like this and how we wound up using, uh, I believe we used one of the low ports for our fu uh, fuel feed, which it looks like is what we're planning to do here as well. Mm -hmm. So you can see how much lower that is. Just makes it easier to clear the cover. But having their base for us to cut, you know, because I believe you've ordered, what, an El Camino or something? Yeah, yep. So we'll, when it comes, we'll see what it does. Cut out what we don't need. You know, trim that and uh, pull those guys together. You know, do a little stitch welding and then probably just epoxy the crap out of it and make it look pretty. Paint it up. No one will ever know. But then we can get a, still a nice quiet snorkel style. It'll look correct It'll look and will hide a lot of this EFI. It's, it's interesting when you think about people get really crazy when they see these things and it's got something that's not quite, oh, it's a 1967 versus 66, and they get crazy about it. So the more that you can hide stuff, uh, the less it keeps people kind of barking at you as they're looking at it. Although, I don't know about you. Part. As I get older, I'm less interested in people's opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, yeah, um, build your things, own car. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing, to build your own damn car. That's the other thing that we did is uh, we are playing with different hose clamps for the radiator. We've sent an awful lot back. <laughs> yeah, I ordered some stuff that certainly was not what they said it was. Uh, if you remember from last week, uh, these uh, valve cover bolts were a little long, so I ended up getting, these are three quarters, let's see if they fit, and some fresh washers. Uh, so that'd be one of the things today too, get that set. And if that doesn't work, then we're gonna do what I wanted to do all along and get those nice little valve cover studs with the nut that goes on because they're bullnosed and yeah. all you got to do is place the valve cover. The only downside is on some engines, this isn't going to be one of them. Sometimes that's a real pain because you've got to clear something. So think like an LT1 or something where the alternator is yeah. literally right over the valve cover. Oh, what a pain. Those aren't very fun. Yeah, you do that once. So I know. And Shop Dog is really confused. He doesn't like all this sanding. This wet sanding's got him spooked. Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. Okay. He has been playing with these clamps. And we finally have one that we are happy with the fit on this hose. So you can see. Nice fit. Because 
there's more to it than it fitting. It has to also, you know, apply pressure. So we're pretty happy with this one. And now he's checking for the lower, mm -hmm. and we will see what he finds there. Oh, yeah, just pop that free. See? Oh, I think that'll do it. Yeah, that's going to fit, because you want it to kind of fall to the middle of this on the inside of the material. Oh, he, uh, we got to teach people how to use the tool. You got the fun tool. Oh, is that as wide as it goes? We'll push the oh. thing. There you go. So, yep, that lines up. Oh. Line up the tooth in the there it in the square, Just and then when it goes, it'll kind of hold itself. Now give it a squeeze. Oh yeah, yeah, and then just oh well, Is that squeeze good? and flip the flippy. Hey, there we go. Flip the flippy. Yep, and then boom. Yeah, and she's under tension. So when I run my finger in here, I can feel that it's collapsed right there. So it's under tension and isn't going to want to fall off. Remember. I mean, we're talking 14 to 16 PSI, depending on your radiator cap. Yeah. It's about like you blew in a bottle with your, you know, just... <laughs> that's about all you can, can muster. So it's not a ton of pressure on the water. We looked at the bolts before we got too far. And I was cleaning them up, and one looked pretty gross. It had a big chunk of metal on it. So I did clean it up in a dye. And there's a bunch of threads that came out. And that usually tells you, ah, something's been cross-threaded. So we flip the torque converter. I chase those two holes, no problem. Oh, this one was a problem. So, as much as you hate doing it, used the uh, centering tap to just lightly start straight. You could see when you looked at it that that had been cross-threaded at an angle. And somebody was just like, ah, it's not going anywhere. And they were not wrong. So we got it started and got it started and eventually I finally have it cleared. So we only used the cutting tap to get her started and then kept taking the re-threader and knocking through and knocking through, uh, blowing it all out because one, you don't want all that stuff built up and two, this does actually have a little window in the bottom and now because you know, I don't have any of these bolts we found three matching bolts with a cap head. And now I can actually screw all three of them all the way down. And they're all the same. Because one of the problems that you run into with old stuff all the time is one will be a different bolt or a different thread or a different size. And that is so frustrating when you're working under a car. So we try not to do that. I like them all to be the same. I don't know if you guys can see it, but when you look in there, there's two flanges that stick out one on that side one on that side those are what drive the pump those go on here and then there's two spline surfaces one for the stator and one for the input shaft so what we have to do as we're sliding it in is get her set on here set on here then rotate lift rotate lift until those actually engage it is very easy and very possible to wedge those into the pump and then get it installed. And it will last about four or five revolutions of the engine before it is total garbage and your whole transmission is coming apart. So a little care here goes a long way. So it always takes a minute, but do you notice how the torque converter is now recessed quite a bit? So to do it, uh, Kevin was holding the transmission still. We had this off the edge a little bit. And I was lifting, slowly turning, lifting, turning, lifting, turning. You, you felt the first two thunks pretty easy. But I'd turn a little bit, pull it back out, slightly lift it, push it in. And then eventually you suddenly get, shoom, and it slides in. And when you see that gap there, now you know you're on the pump safely. It can feel like you're on the pump. And you can bolt it into the car and destroy the transmission in no time flat. And then a common trick for people to do until they're ready to actually mate it up is keep the torque converter on by just taking an old wrench and chucking her in. So I did not invent that trick. I was showing that when I was a little kid, so I know that's been around forever. All right. So she hasn't done the clear yet. 
Look, look how nice that's come out. All right. We always forget how heavy those are. So from that, we threw a board on this so we could get up there and then get our arms under it so that we could get it on here. Remember, oil pans of any kind are very thin. Always spread the, the load across with a nice soft board. So now we'll just keep lifting her up and we did just pull the wrench, but notice the transmission is still splined on the pump. See this gap? If it isn't there with this torque converter, stop. Redo it. Make sure you haven't damaged the pump because it's real easy to break those two ears we were talking about earlier. Okay. This has been a frustrating time in the study of patience, getting all of this lined up just right. I don't think we studied but any patients. We think we finally have it. So we will kind of get her or tightened down and that'll be good. I'm always saying aftermarket garbage is garbage. Come around and take a look at this. You'll notice I have a feeler gauge in my hand, right? So I can get here, I can't hear. And I can't hear. So this aftermarket oil pan does not fit. So, we think we can maybe come up with a plate here to grab that thickness. We're just very, very, very disappointed about that. And this is this is a replacement motor mount here. Brand new. Could that be uh, too short? I, yeah, it could be the, the wrong thing or they cast it wrong. Once again, aftermarket garbage is garbage. So we're going to pop that down and see if we can put a shim plate in here on each side. Doesn't have to be super thick, I don't think. I don't think we need much, but this will not last long. This will be an oil pan leak in no time flat. And the reason this motor came out was to put a new oil pan on it. Yeah, because remember they had hit a... Uh, yep, they tore a hole in it. Uh, because they had the car all the way down coming off of one of those ancient uh, floor hoists mm -hmm. with the big bolt in the middle. Uh -huh. Kind they used to use in the old uh, gas stations. Yep. So, okay, let's pull one and see what that looks like. I only just tightened it. It took some doing, and we wound up putting a spacer in here, and we're not happy about it. But now we have clearance. I can run the feeler gauge around the oil pan. I know it's close, but hey, close is fine. Daylight's what we want. Okay, and now he's looking to do his drive shaft. Shop dog is exhausted. He's being watched. Because many years ago, well, for many years, we were leprechauns, but the COVID's kind of kind of killed uh, that aspect of roller derby. So we were at a, uh, about last night, and uh, so fine said, hey, I found you guys, and brought them to us. So they're going to go in the shop somewhere. We're not sure where, but they're from a fun time. Okay, as soon as he finishes snugging up the drive shaft... We can drop this back now so Pixie can finish working. And then we're going to kind of do a little cleaning up because we've made a bit of a mess. And with as much work as this was, we're we're both pretty tired. So he's just getting his U-bolts on there and this will be good. Okay, so Pixie's working. we got the car down. You always forget just how much room there is back here. Look at that. We can actually see the back of the head. It's not even just reaching. We can see them. Anyway... We got that, it's about bloody time. See, one of the differences between BOP and a Chevrolet engine is the way the top of the bell housing goes. And I do think on the Chevrolet, because it's so much taller like that on the mating surface, I actually think it does help you get yourself in plane a little bit. But that's okay, we got it, it worked. So, she's in there doing her work. We're doing a little cleanup because we're old people and we're tired. Okay. We're going to call it for today. We're closing it out. One of the things we were just looking at is we've got this specialty hose. And what they want to do is go off of that and come back straight into the heater core. The problem we have is it's way over here. And even with that L, eh, we're not sure if we like that. We're, we're going to think on that some more. Um, we were just starting to look at remembering how all that bell crank linkage went back there. That ought to be fun. So, you know, a few things to, to work out. We've 
I haven't actually connected it because I think we're still going to use the same point for the modulator line as well. But we're, we're starting to remember where everything goes, getting it there. Uh, we dug out a battery off the floor that is either from 2009 or 2019. We don't know. So we're just going to trickle charge it for a couple days and see if it holds. If it does, that's our battery. If it doesn't, that's our core. That's the way that works. So, but before he goes and just buys one, what if that one's fine? Um, Pixie was painting and then one of the spray cans started sputtering. She's like, yeah, let's, let's just hold, let it all dry. She'll kind of knock that down a little bit, finish it off. There's no point in putting this much work into something and then getting in a hurry. So I think we're, I think we're close to wrapping it for today. This was a lot more work than it normally takes to put in a transmission. That thing was just a fighter. So, all right, Pix. Thanks for watching.